Guys, welcome back. Got another short video of a code snippet. Um, before I publish the next video, which is going to include the MQTT for our little sensor board we're working on, um, I came across this short two lines of code that really got me out of a rabbit hole I was going down, trying to store the minimum and maximum values of our temperature sensor. Now, you could use any sensor, but in our case, we've got a DHT11. So... I, I I was fanning around with about 20 lines of code trying to do this and failing miserably. And then I did a little bit of research and it took me a while to find this. And I thought I'd make this short video because it wasn't very well documented that how easy it is to do. So without further ado, let's crack on. And hopefully this time you'll be able to see the text in the video as I hopefully sort out the uh, video resolution. So let's have a go. So here we are with the code. So if you've got our little board or you've got a B1 Mini, any type of um, sensor or Arduino, you, you can follow along. So um, let, let's just see what I have done, which has saved us hours. So basically this you're used to this and you should have this library installed. And here's the details of the library if you haven't got it installed. We are using, if you've got the same kit as me, the little blue sensor, the DHT11. So we're just defining it here. This, if you remember, is defining our uh, connections of our screen. And it was slightly different to a standard pinout. So we had to put this in. We're declaring that pin 5 is the pin the sensor is actually taking the data from. This is the declaration, I believe it's called, to tell the DHT that we're on uh, pin 5 and it's a DHT11. Now this is some strange some strange figures I had to put in here because um, just make sure I'm recording <laughs> because if you look the min temp I've had to set to 100 and the max temp minus 40. Now I was playing around with these figures because I just couldn't get my head around with it. Now I'm reading in degrees C. So if you're reading in degrees F, you may have to make these numbers larger because in C the figures are small, if I understand that right. So anyhow, you, you have to put a value in greater than the initial temperature your sensor is going to read and a figure in this case lower than the sensor is going to read and if you don't it doesn't do the maths correct, uh, correctly now I could use a float further down in the code but I always like to declare my stuff at the front so I sort of know what I'm declaring and what um, I'm setting up so that was really strange you can play around those figures and you'll see it, it makes it all go funny and there's you can read in the text here uh, what it does then these are floating here this is we're going to read the temperature in our case we're only going to do the temperature I've included a float for humidity and uh, if you want to read it in F you can uh, 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 get the sensor reading F so this is setting up our uh, OLED display this is the void setup, so serial port, we start that. Why I begin, we want to start reading data from the screen. This is going to clear our screen from the last readings, because if you plugged your board in and it's still got the last code in, this will just clear it. So this is initializing the display, setting the contrast down quite low, because it doesn't have to be bright. In our case, we're flipping the uh, screen around. I'm setting the initial font as 10. This line could actually come out because I, um, I, I do it further down. A delay of one second, clear the display, another delay of 20 milliseconds, start the um, temperature sensor, and then we get into our loop. So this is the, the exciting bit, really. So we start a void loop. This line, it, we're taking a temperature reading and we're storing it as T, so just temperature. If you wanted to increase the code down below and do humidity as well, you can do. 
but this is just an explanation of uh, the, the, the two simple lines of code. If you wanted to take the temperature in Fahrenheit, you could replace line 66 with this one, and you'll notice it's got the true statement at the end. So that will give you a reading in Fahrenheit. So there's no need to do a calculation like it has here, where you are taking the temperature and then doing the maths to, to um, convert into degrees F. The, the, the library will do that for you. And the reason I declared these up here also, all three of them, is because if the sensor fails on any of the three, so that's your humidity, temperature, or in F, it will give us an error reading both on the serial monitor and it will obviously tell us on our screen. So now this is the, the meat of the video and it doesn't look very meaty, but it saved me about 20 lines of code and an awful lot of frustration. So here we're just saying, we want to store the minimum temperature and in the brackets you can see you've got minimum temp and comma t. So what we're asking this to do is every reading that it takes, it will look at the temperature and if it's lower than the last temperature it read, it will store it as minimum temperature. And same for maximum, it will, as it's reading the temp, if it's higher than it was last time, it will store it in the value maximum temperature. And that's it. It's crazily simple. Oh, excuse me. Uh, now, where did we get to? Sorry about that. So, yeah, so this is storing the temperature. So it's really, really easy. Um, so the next thing to do is we're printing the data out to the serial monitor and this is another new code that I found to help us align text on the OLED screens. So I've used it down here. It's a command to center it, center it in the middle of the screen, left align or right align. So here we are clearing the display. Um, we are setting the font to 10 because I want the small bit because I was running out of space using the larger font. So I'm going to align the text small font in the middle. So here we just got to declare the center pixel of the screen. Now our screen is 128 by 64. So we declare 64 is a center and this is what we want to print and Strange enough, it will print in the center of the screen. So you can play around with that. If you add more text here, it centers itself on the center line. So then I, then I change into a larger text, and these are figures to say where you want the text to start printing. So I want to print the temperature of the current temperature. Then I want to store a, print the temperature of the maximum temperature and then the minimum temperature. And as you remember, we need a delay on uh, any sensor that you read. And these cheap sensors, we know they're not very accurate, but they, they're, they're working perfectly fine for what we're using it for. And uh, a delay of three seconds is fine because uh, they work at half a second and one second interval when they're um, taking the readings. And if you do it faster than that, you can confuse the temperature, get some really strange results coming out of it. And you can also increase the temperature of the sensor itself. So I've been told I've never done a test, but have a decent delay. In reality, we would probably have this a much greater delay because why would you want to take a read in every three seconds? We're just doing it for the, for the example. So let's um, upload this. and we'll see what we get. So hopefully it will compile properly. There's no errors. Hopefully I've got the right port set in yep, com five. So let's turn on our other screens. You should be able to see the screen now. It should go blank. And then you'll notice that the three temperatures will be identical at the beginning because it's read the current temperature. So the minimum and maximum is the current temperature. So there it goes. And there you can see what we've got, 18.9. So that's the sensor working. And if we throw on the serial monitor, you can see that 
it, it printed the title and now it's going around. So now I'm going to do is just touch the sensor and I'm going to let go and it should go up a few degrees. There you go. So uh, now obviously the now and max will go up together because if it's going up, the now temperature and the maximum temperature, if it's higher than the last max temperature, will be the same. But once, although I've removed my fingers, once the sensors starts to cool down, you will notice that the max temperature will stay at the max temperature and the now temperature will start dropping down. And that's what we were trying to accomplish. So just give that a few seconds and it should start dropping down. 19.5. It's stable now, so the next reading, hopefully, it will be uh, the now temperature should go down. He says, hopefully, there you go, it's starting to drop down. And that was it. So those two lines of code have saved me massive headache. It's made the code a lot shorter, and it's so easy to understand. But there was no real reference online um, to, sh to show you how to do it. So I, ho I hope you found that of interest. <laughs> If you like the video, please like it. And if you are, have you, if you have got um, one of these sensors, then um, please tell me what you're doing it with it. And thank you for the people that have subscribed in the last, well, since the beginning and the last week. There's been three or four within the last ten days. That's always encouraging to find people are following me. Although I'm muddling through this code, say so I'm calling it a journey of discovery. I'm no coder. Um, I've got high hopes for this little sensor. I say the next video is MQTT. It is working. I'm just putting in some comments in the code. I had a problem with it that it was uh, publishing information to the MQTT server every second and I couldn't trace in the code what I'd done wrong. Uh, and I had two curly braces in the wrong place and that's all it was. Once I sorted that out, it would publish in the interval that I wanted it to publish. So I think that's it. That's... um. Andy feeling, yeah, happy with himself again. Hopefully you learned something today about this two lines of code. Very simple. And I hope you uh, use it in your code in the future. So for now, that's uh, Andy saying good afternoon.